Hi there, my name is Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today I'm looking at something that I've never looked at before on this channel. It's a Silent Night electric blanket. Now, this was sent to me by Stuart from infinitebargains.co.uk and Infinite Bargains for You over on eBay. And basically, he said that he plugged both because he's given me two control units, both of them into a working blanket, and it didn't work. So when you plug these ones in here, which you can see we're plugged in there now, there should be a little light that comes on here and they're not lighting up. So this one is dead. I've also plugged in this one here and it's also dead. It doesn't matter what level I have it on here. I can't feel any heat from the blanket, but even forget about that. If it was working, the light would come on here. So uh, it's not working on any of the three settings. So I'm quite interested to see what's failed on both of them. Is it a common problem? One thing that I'm curious about is, it says in the instructions here, do not use in the folded condition. This will trip the overheat sensor in the heat controller. So I'm wondering, of course it's folded at the moment, but it's not working. I'm wondering whether that's the problem. Overheat sensor in here, is it something which resets itself or is it kind of one of those thermal fuse-like things on a coffee machine? And once it blows, it blows. It's there for safety, but then the coffee machine stops working. Is it a similar thing to here? So let's bring it over to the blue mat and see if we can get these working. Well, I think I'm gonna call this a tea break fix and all these items arrived yesterday. So it was like Christmas come early for me. I wasn't expecting anything apart from the blanket. But look at this, a Kip Hakes mug. Let's try not to spill the rhubarb and ginger on the inside. And uh, there's a little 8-bit logo on the back there, so you can check out Kip Hakes' channel. He's been mentioned a few times on here. He was part of the uh, YouTube Fixers series. So uh, yeah, Kip's a lovely bloke. So if you haven't already checked him out, check him out. And check this out. This arrived from Michael S. It says, uh, love your videos, keep them coming. How good is this? This came into the PO box. You ready? Ta-da! Look at that. It's like burnt into it. Now that's nice. I don't know how they do that, whether that's lasered in or something. And it's got a... It's got a nice smell of a kind of like varnish, burnt wood type smell. That's good, isn't it? Right, let's uh, see what's going on with this here. So first of all, just out of curiosity, I want to see what the reading is on the, the blanket. Now, apologies, I might slip up and call it a blankie. That's what happens when you have... Uh, kids even though my kids are not that young now I still call it a blankie now let's just see if any of this makes sense so I'm on just normal ohms resistance here I'm just going to go across some I want to see if we get a reading off anything okay so we're getting a reading on the outer two so if there is a circuit between their wires then we're getting a reading so that's uh, 1277 ohms Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so we got something there as well. 2,500 ohms. Was that amount double? Hold on. Is that double? So 2,555, half of that is 1,227. 1,207, no, it's not okay. Uh, right, what about that one? That one, no, so we've got the outer two and those ones there. Now, I don't know what they should be reading, but it's not open. So that says to me, I reckon the blanket itself is gonna be okay. So now let's see what's happening with this control box. Looks brand new. It says on the box that it should have a three year guarantee. So we've got a three amp fuse in here. Let's see if we've got continuity. which we have, so it's not the fuse. Right, let's see how we get into this thing. Right, so we've got some weird tri-wing type screws here. What we got here? This is different. This is the different control box. Can you see the screws are different? Okay, well they might not have the same fault, but yeah, they're not identical. I wonder if they come out of the same factory or not. No, is that, that's the biggest tri-wing I got. Is that gonna work in here? Yes, it is. 
yeah. Oh, ball bearing. What ball bearing came out? Right, okay, now what we got? So we got a sliding switch that connects this one to those ones there. So this should be incredibly simple, should it not? But let's not lose that. So now we have all these wires going here. Let's take this out here. We've got more tri wing screws here as well. Ah, is that going to be a thermal fuse here, I wonder? Oh, there's more here, there's more. We've got a fuse. Fuse here, a couple of resistors, some diodes, and we have got, it says FT. Which is on a weird kind of spring thing. And what are these? Resistor and resistor. Okay, well, first of all, let's do the fuse. Right, let's just see now. That fuse is okay. Fuse is okay. Can we work out what's happening? So we've got the neutral here, there. So the neutral is going to be on this one here. So we should have a connection between here and here, which we have. So that's definitely okay. Now the live one goes to here. And what does it do? It goes up to this thing which then must be some sort of like thermal fuse, I'm going to call it, that goes up to here. Does it go to here or here? From there it goes, no, it goes to here, so it's going to go to this one here. So now, let's go on to the live here, and it should come up here, which it does, and it comes up here. Does it come up here? No, it doesn't. It doesn't come up here. So now, that says to me that that thermal fuse, I'm going to call it, is gone. So now let's go on to normal ohms and let's see if it gives me any reading. No, it doesn't. Right, so once it goes to there, it will then connect up to these ones here for the different power, won't it? So these ones much, ah, the different power settings one, two and three, you know, when you slide this down, it's moving, isn't it? To connect this one to here, this one to here, or, you know, this to here, this to here, this to here. That must then connect up different wires in the circuit. Right now, let's see if we've got a reading. Because otherwise it was just wires, wasn't it? We have. Okay, so that's the 1200 one. That's the 2.5 there. Right, okay. Let me put that to one side and I just want to take apart this one here and see if it's the same. Ah, this one's exposed so this will be easier for me to see what it is. It hasn't got any of that gunk on it. Okay, let's check here. This will also check the fuse by going straight from here into here. So we're on neutral. And we're going to come up here. Yep. And now let's go to live. And we're going to come up. Doorbell, one second. Sorry about that. Right now, uh, live. So, live here to here. So that's okay. But now, will it go from here to here? Yes. Is it going to go to here? No. So this has gone again. Right, let's now see, zoom in, and let's see what that is. Set 76 degrees Celsius. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to have to unsolder it because I can't see what it is. Let me just see if we're getting a reading on the resistors. See if they look okay. Uh, I, I'm not, I, I haven't looked up the colour bands. I just want to see if there's something. Yeah, so uh, 1.8K, 1800 ohm resistor. And again, near enough 1800. Let me just double check on this one here. Yeah, 1800 and 
1800 or thereabouts. Right, so yeah, on both of them, it's that weird thermal fuse that was gone. So I'm quite pleased that I thought it might be that before even taking it apart. And I haven't watched any other videos on it. Maybe slowly things are starting to sink in. Right, it's only taken four years. Let me uh, get my soldering iron on, unsolder this, see what it is. So if you were to put a wire between here and here, then it is going to work. There's going to be no safety there, is there? So here we are. Let's zoom in and see what we have. Set 76 degrees. What's that? 125 to 250 volt. Set 76 degrees. So does that mean if it gets over 76 degrees, it's going to blow? Now, I have got some thermal fuses, but I need to double check because the ones I got were for the coffee machine and I'm pretty sure they were a hundred and something, but I might be lucky. Right, so that's that one. I'm also gonna take out the other one while I've got my soldering iron heated up. This one's even different again. It's got these weird things on here. I wonder, is that so they can clamp it? So when they heat it up with a soldering iron, the heat doesn't hit the fuse. The heat kind of goes through whatever they've clamped it to here, like some sort of heat sink to take the heat away, don't know. Ah, there we go, we've got more on, more to go on here. So this is a two amp, 250 volt. This one says 102 degrees. So let me do a little bit of research to find out. Uh, I wonder whether different blankets have different, should be all mix and match really, shouldn't it, on these ones? I'm just wondering whether, for example, uh, different control boxes will have different fuses going by the uh, the blanket that it's attached to. But saying that, is there anything on the boxes to indicate? To see if the model numbers are the same. Interesting. This one is 75 watt. This one is 40 watt. Yeah. So they are different. Model number's different as well, TTFF, TTCC. Is that the problem? Could some of them be drawing too much? If, uh, you know, the control units used with, uh, uh, lesser control units used with, for example, a double. Ah, do you know what it probably is? A single blanket and a double blanket. Okay, well, it looks like I'm gonna have to buy two fuses then. Uh, I suppose it would be safer to have the 75 one, this one's 76 Celsius one here on the single blanket, wouldn't it? Because maybe the blanket would be burning before this one burns if there was a fault. Don't know. Answers down in the comments for that one, please. Right, let me look into these uh, fuses. Right, so I'm just having a look at these thermal fuses. So this is RS Components, and it says here that thermal fuses, also called thermal cutoffs, are a safety device used in electrical circuits to provide protection against appliances overheating. So obviously you would want your blanket not to overheat, so that's why you have these in there. Having a quick look here, so I need to get, if you have a look here, I need to get this one here, which is at 102 degrees Celsius, two amps, 250 volts. And the other one is two amps, 76 degrees here. Yeah, so this must be for maybe the single bed, but it's still two amp, you can see it says there two A in the middle. So just as an example, I haven't found the correct ones yet, but 102, so I found one here which is 97 degrees Celsius, will probably be okay, it's five degrees less, it's not more, it just means it's gonna blow a bit easier. But you can see there, two amp, 250 volts. And it's only 97p for five of them. I think that's excluding VAT. So you're going to be looking at about 25p each. So they're not expensive. Obviously, I'm going to have to pay postage and stuff. But I just need to find the ones as close as possible. So this is the important bit here, the 250 volts and the 2 amp. I don't mind if this is a slight little bit less, but as long as there's 2 amp, 250 volts. But I'll try to get them as close as possible. Right, I'm really struggling to find these ones in 2 amp. I found the, the higher temperature one, but the lower temperature one, the 76 degree, I found one in France that is 2 amps, but that's about 80 degrees, but that should be fine. But uh, all the other ones here are all 10 amps. But as soon as I go to 2 amps, it only comes up with the high temperature ones. But anyway, leave it with me. Next time you see it, I will have some kind of thermal cutout, which will hopefully be able to be soldered back in. Right, okay, there's been a development and uh, you're not gonna like this, but I'm not gonna repair this item. 
I am going to put a thermal fuse in just to show it working on the video to show that it can be repaired but I'm not doing it after reading this forum here and basically somebody came up with the same situation as me somebody's given them a, an electric blanket to uh, to fix and they're saying they would only fix it if they could get the exact same part now I don't even know the makers of my thermal fuses I can't buy the small one it doesn't seem to exist even the one in France is an 80 degree one not a 76 degree one maybe they're not available because people don't fix them because it's not like a coffee machine in the kitchen it's something that somebody sleeps on and according to this you can get nasty fires from it uh, and what they're saying is it's an interesting little read this forum what they're saying is that it's the thermal fuse would have to be identical because it's sandwiched in between the two resistors and it's measuring the heat of the resistors. So even if it had a different body, it might be able to soak away the heat or if you don't, if it's not the exact same size, it's not going to perform like the original. So I actually think it's far too risky. So what I'm going to do is these CPC ones are actually the same as the controller and the big one because, well, near enough, these are 140 Four degree functioning temperature and the one that I need is 102 degree degree functioning temperature with a holding temperature of 76 degrees so I'm just going to pop one of these in just to see if it's working on the video I'm going to be in control I'm not sleeping on it I'm just got my hand on the plug if it goes on fire I will unplug it and I will put out the fire but then I'm going to unsolder it and end the video unfortunately yeah I'm not going to fix this electric blanket because yeah if I wouldn't personally use it but then what happens if something ever happened to me and this was lying around the house and then somebody plugged it in seen it was working and then it ends up being sold on ebay or a car boot sale or somewhere it could then be slept on by for example a small child or anybody and then it could go on fire with somebody in it in its sleep so no after reading this one now i think everybody's quite 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 right only one person suggested to fix it everybody else was saying you know you'd be mad to fix it so it should be wedged in between there but this is too fat to wedge in between there anyway so i suppose as more current is being drawn these are going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and i suppose if they get too hot that's when these things blow so for example well mind you this is going to be a different blanket than it's not necessarily the same blanket with the controller, is it? So maybe something happened to the blanket. Something might have got wet on the blanket. Not my one, because Stuart might have sent me a different blanket. Do you see what I mean? If there's a job lot of these. Uh, but maybe that's what happened. So maybe if you got the correct one, this would be perfect. Who knows? So in this bit, I'm just soldering up the fuse. I'm using low melt solder, otherwise the heat from the soldering iron and the solder will just burn the fuse open. And then once we've got that in place, it's just a bodge job, just barely hanging on in there. Once we've got it in place, the continuity comes back on that live wire, the brown wire. It now has continuity going right up to the top part of the switch. And then I just need to put it fully back together so I can test it. Right, well, okay, let's, uh, I'm going to plug this in on the kitchen floor. Then I'll see if it's getting warm on my hands. Uh, maybe we can try to fix that little, I'll tell you what, before I do that, let's see if we can fix up the temperature probe that I, in my thermostatic shower, that, uh, in that video, it didn't work, did it? Keep giving the HHH reading. Now... I reckon it's going to be something to do with the wire. So let's uh, take this apart. I reckon they were shorting. Yeah, I think they were shorting. Let's see if we can get a reading. I've got to put it back on here, haven't I? I'll tell you what, let's unsolder this and uh, redo these ones here.
I am going to strip him back because the wires look a little bit weak. Right, let's see now if that's going to be okay. Let's put a tiny bit of hot glue on there. In fact, you know what? I can just reuse what's here. I'll just heat that up. I'll put that in here, around here, and just uh, heat it up. Use a bit more. Right, okay, so that's uh, clipped in now. Let's see if it's going to start reading the proper temperature. Yes, excellent. Right, let's see if it goes up. Fantastic. So, dodgy connection there, which was shorting. It will probably fail again in the future. Maybe not now, because I have put the wires right into the circuit board while before there was a, a millimetre or so uh, short. So that's why they were twisted around each other and shorted. Okay, so let's uh, go into the kitchen because then if the blanket does go on fire, it's going to be on a tiled floor and it'd be easy to deal with because there's plenty of water. Obviously, after I turn it off. All right, here goes. Hope it doesn't explode on me. Now, let's plug it in. We're in there now. Let's see if the light comes on here. So let's put it on to zero to begin with. I'm plugging it in right now. And please don't do anything weird. There we go, excellent. Right, so we've got the red light on. And I suppose let's put it up to, th am I tempting fate by putting it on three? Let's put it on to three and see what happens. Let me just move out of the way a minute and we'll have a look at the temperature gauge and we can see whether the temperature is gonna start moving on up. Yeah, you can see it's starting to climb. Right, I'm just going to fast forward it through the next uh, maybe five minutes. Okay, well, I can definitely feel it's getting warm and hopefully you've seen that that's risen a little bit. I can't remember what it started at. But I've had a look on Amazon just to see what these things cost. And this is the current product. So a king size one looks to be £36. But a single one, which this one is, is £18. So yeah, it's not a very high priced item, but still, although I haven't fixed it, I still think that it was interesting to see what had failed on it. You know, to just show the thermal fuse. So I don't really see that as a failure because it was nice thinking beforehand that that might be what was wrong with it. And sure enough, that is what was wrong with it. And you can see now it is working, but it's certainly not gonna be safe to use. If maybe you could get the exact same thermal fuse, then maybe it would be safe. You, you put down in the comments what you think down below. If somebody asked you to fix one of these, would you fix them? Or do you think it's too, uh, do you think it's too dangerous messing with something which could potentially cause a fire while somebody's sleeping on it? Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just take out the thermal fuse and just show that on camera, just to show you that the product is now not working again. Right, obviously I'm unplugged again. Right, 
and see if I can take this out without breaking it. I've got my iron set low, just at 300 degrees Celsius. I'm just gonna tap that for a second, there we go. Tap off. Now let's see if that's blown, I'm sure it hasn't. No, there we go. So now I can use that for something that is gonna be safe to use in the future. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. I know you didn't see a fix on this one, but you've seen me prove the fall, and you did see the fix. It's just not a lasting repair for the reasons I've already spoke about. At least this is working again, so I have shown you something that's fixed and hopefully is going to be as reliable as it was beforehand. Even more reliable now, I would say. So uh, yeah, massive thanks to Stuart for sending this out to me. I think it's been quite an interesting one. Hopefully you have uh, found it relatively interesting too. Big thanks to Kip Hakes for sending me his mug. Check out his channel if you haven't already. And of course, if you haven't, think about subscribing. And if you like this video, think about liking and click that bell notification. There you go. Massive thanks to Michael for sending that to me as well. So it's been a good week. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully I will see you all very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.